challenges um, suggests a, a variety of possible approaches to talking about where we're at in terms of writing at the college. And I have a, a pretty specific uh, way that I want to approach the, this topic today. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to approach this by sharing with you some institutional research uh, or institutional data that um, really has, has circulated uh, in some circles on campus, but not in others, um, and uh, you know has come out in, in pieces and, and really hasn't been collected in, a, in one spot uh, to craft or to, to sort of try to present some kind of a, a coherent uh, narrative of where we're at in writing at York. Additionally, I'm going to talk about uh, some, some survey research. Uh, some data that comes from the National Survey of Student Engagement, or York uh, College's participation in that survey. Particularly, I'm going to focus on uh, a set of uh, 27 supplemental questions about students' writing practices at the college and about uh, students' uh, descriptions of the kinds of assignments and pedagogies that faculty use in writing in courses on campus. Um, these two sets of data uh, are but one way that we might look at uh, achievements and challenges uh, for writing at, at the college. One uh, alternative uh, approach might be to look really to try to peek into the classrooms a little more, uh, not just through surveys, but uh, perhaps by looking at, for example, faculty syllabi um, and maybe looking at assignments to sort of dig deeper into what, what exactly uh, the classroom looks like in terms of writing assignments um, <clears throat> uh, in writing across the curriculum, we've, we, we've done a little bit of that uh, before, and, and we've talked a little bit about that data. Um, I'm not sharing that, or I'm not presenting that today. Another way that we might look at uh, writing at York is to uh, look at uh, student data, not just survey data, but actually uh, to look at sort of direct measures uh, of writing development by looking at actual student writing. Uh, we could do this uh, by looking at a specific course uh, or class or set of courses um, to look at outcomes, you know, what kinds of writing are students doing or where are they at at the end of a, of a course by looking, um, really by looking at their writing. Another approach might be longitudinal where we might uh, identify a set of students and, and collect samples of their writing early on uh, and then, uh, you know, several years later collect samples again to look at uh, growth and development. Uh, some work like that is being uh, contemplated really through uh, the, the Outcomes Assessment Committee on campus, uh, particularly a subcommittee of that. That, um, you know, it hasn't been decided exactly how that will be, you know, whether we'll approach it that way and, and if so, how. Um, but I'm not talking about uh, those approaches today. So, um, so I, I, again, it's a particular uh, way of looking at, uh, you know, writing achievements and challenges at the campus. Um, that I want to talk about today. Expressing yourself on paper is very key. And you can't do that if you haven't been able to exercise that particular muscle. So what, what kinds of things exercise the muscle? I mean, I, I think about, like, you know, you go to the gym, you lift weights, or this, this kind of thing. I mean, you don't go to class and lift weights. So what does what exercising the, the writing muscle look like in a writing intensive class? Well, it's exercised through revision um, and writing different drafts. And when you write a, another draft or you revise, you make, you're making a completely new approach to the paper. Um, many of us know that uh, York College has what we call a spiral writing curriculum. Uh, the spiral writing curriculum begins in the freshman year where students take English 125, our first year composition course. Um, it's followed up um, on paper uh, and in terms of graduation requirements, students take two writing intensive designated courses in the general education core uh, at the 100 or 200 level. And those are courses offered in the humanities or in the social sciences in the national uh, natural sciences. Um, and so students uh, ideally take those courses before they, uh, sometime in their first two years before they reach 60 credits. As 60 credits or soon thereafter, students um, are required to take writing uh, 301, 302, or 303. This is the junior level uh, composition course, and it's um, an introduction to academic research and, and research writing. 
And then uh, after writing 301, 302, or 303, students are required to complete an upper level, a three or 400 level writing intensive designated course in their major. And this is a um, kind of an introduction to writing in the discipline uh, where, fact, where uh, the instructor, the faculty member is, is including writing in the course, but uh, the, the emphasis is, um, in addition to sort of emphasizing writing development, is really about focused on um, writing in the specific uh, sort of genre conventions, uh, ways of, of knowing and, and thinking um, and, and writing in a, in a particular discipline so that students graduate with, uh, you know, some, um, some explicit assistance development with regard to how, say, psychology, uh, psychologists or, or, um, or literature faculty or, uh, you know, biology faculty uh, write and think. One of the things about the uh, spiral writing curriculum uh, at, at your college is, um, I you know, people on campus might not really recognize this, but this is a, a quite a robust uh, set of writing requirements: three writing intensive courses, uh, two at the lower level that follow up or reinforce freshman writing, and then uh, if, you know after that a a you know, a, a composition course at the junior level to uh, solidify some of that work that happens at the lower level and then to extend that through research uh, to and reach towards the uh, writing in the disciplines course. This is, you know, quite a robust set of set of requirements, really. Um, and then, of course, we have this, the CPE, the CUNY proficiency exam, which is not really part of the spiral writing curriculum, but it's sort of injected into it or uh, tied up in some way with it. Uh, the CUNY proficiency exam was instituted by the uh, City University of New York uh, sometime after 1999, right after 1999, um, to coincide with the end of remediation at the four-year schools and really to basically, uh, through a standardized uh, reading, writing, and, and a quantitative uh, exam, to... Uh, to, our, to, to basically evaluate whether students in their first two years, in their first 45 credits, you know, how, what they're learning and, and what their competencies are. Um, and so that, that comes in, and ideally students are, are invited, are, are, are taking that course um, sometime around the time either when they're taking their second writing intensive course or immediately following that. And so while the spiral writing curriculum is not designed to prepare students for the CPE, the kinds of things that happen in, in writing intensive courses and in writing courses, uh, the reading development, the writing development, the thinking, um, you know, we really believe that, that those kinds of, of capacities, competencies, uh, are conducive, uh, you know, really can help students develop uh, and, and perform on the CUNY proficiency exam. But this exam is sort of is inserted from outside and comes in, um, again, sometime before students take uh, writing 301, 302, or 303. I want to turn now to, and look at our freshman writing course, uh, English 125, uh, sometimes known as first year composition. Um, what we're looking at here is a, a chart that shows... Uh, entering students' high school academic averages uh, and, and pass rates uh, on, the, on freshman writing or English 125. And the key things to, to note here are that uh, when students come into the college with a high school academic average below a 75, their performance in English 125, their pass rate is much lower than it is if they come in um, at a 75 or higher and particularly uh, in the last couple of years when they come in above a, a 78. Um, <clears throat> and we can see this, you know, we can see it at, at any point in the chart, but I think if we look at the fall 08 entering class, there's a nice step here where those students who came in below a 75, their pass rate is, on, is below uh, 70%. Uh, students who came in with a high school academic average above a 78, their pass rate approaches 82% in the course. Um, and this is significant I think as we reflect on some changes on campus uh, at York College in the last few years, we've put in, we've begun to put in a basically, a, 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 you know, sort of a floor, a minimum for, for entry in, into the college. And so as we've done that, I think what we are, um, what I'm hoping that we, we're seeing, and I think that in the next slide, I think we'll show this, what I, what I, what I think we're, we're going to start to see is that as the uh, student body, as the entering freshman, 
have a more um, are not spread between sort of below a C average coming out of high school to into the B and, and higher average uh, coming out of high school. If we're not dealing with a that wide of a range uh, of academic performance before they get to, to, to college, uh, in our freshman writing course, the faculty are, are, are going to be in a better position to support the students. Um, <clears throat> and again, because of the end of uh, remediation, um, York College is not allowed. We, As a four-year school, we cannot offer uh, a developmental writing course. So um, these students, with, you know, in the, the blue bars here, those students often at many schools would place into a developmental writing course and begin there and then move into the, the first year composition. Um, and we don't have that option. Um, the next slide here is is an interesting one. It shows, uh, and this data, the data here really are, are come from CUNY, come from the City University, uh, part of the uh, performance, performance management process, uh, which is a, uh, a process that identifies a series of, I don't know, something over 100 uh, metrics, uh, 100 different measures uh, on which the, the college is evaluated. And one of them is uh, pass rates in gateway courses. Uh, so the, the the university is very interested in pass rates and gateway courses in math as as well as in in writing, and so here we see the FYC the first year composition completion rates uh, at York College and then at the 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 four year or senior colleges across CUNY, and then the entire CUNY system. So York College is uh, is the red bar here, and we can see sort of real gaps between. York College and the and its sister institutions, uh, sister four-year schools, the senior colleges, which is the yellow bar, and then of course even a gap between York College and the university uh, performance, overall university first-year composition completion rates, and that includes the, both the senior colleges or the four-year schools and the community colleges. The the thing that I want to highlight here for us is to look at uh, where we were in fall of seven and where we were in fall of eight. And I don't have the data yet on fall of nine. Uh, but in fall of seven, uh, you know, and, and earlier, you know, in fall of six, and the, the data are similar going back, uh, we see a real gap between where we were, uh, or where we are in terms of pass rates for freshman composition, and where our sister institutions, our four year schools, uh, you know, sort of, for example, City College, Queens College, Baruch College, and others, where they are in terms of their pass rates. Um, in fall of seven, it was a 15 point gap. You know, so we're all four year institutions. None of us can offer developmental writing or developmental work. Um, and we are charged, you know, we are held, uh, <laughs> we are expected to be in line or to meet the standard of the, the four year institutions. And so, you know, 15 point gap is a pretty big one to make up. Uh, and, you know, we've been working on this, and, and I think that we can start to see some results here by fall 08. Uh, we close the gap in in half, basically, from from a fifteen point gap to an eight point gap. And I think a couple things are in play here. One, uh, because we now have uh, basically a high school academic average minimum, uh, what we're doing is dramatically reducing the number of students who have come into the college, uh, you know, with a much lower academic profile. Um, and so when we have a more, if you would, uh, academically homogeneous uh, group of students uh, in the freshman writing class, the faculty can sort of target to where the, the class is. When, you know, in the past, when we've had students who are below a 75, students who may be, you know, barely a C uh, coming out of high school, sitting in the same classroom with students who may be B plus um, high school graduates, uh, that, that's a real challenge for the, for the instructor. To develop curriculum and and to uh, and activities that really can challenge both sets of of students, and move them from where they are as writers to uh, you know really college level writing, uh, which for any any student coming out of high school is really a, is a leap. Um, so that's one reason I think we've closed the gap. So, you know, it basically changes uh, in terms um, of admissions requirements at the college. But uh, a couple other things are happening, and that's uh, you know within the English department itself. Um, what we're seeing is, you know, we have faculty development for uh, freshman writing that is, you know, sort of uh, establishing and encouraging conversations among faculty uh, to sort of, you know, about, you know, best practices uh, and activities that can work with our students. Um, we have, you know, some, some clear, pretty clear oversight with regard to um, 
to the syllabi, to the learning objectives and the activities and what's expected in the course. Um, and I think that, you know, creating that uh, consistency is also contributing here to a reduction in that gap. Um, connected with that, also in the in you know in the last couple of years, what we've what we've seen is a and I don't have a, a chart that shows this, but the data are there uh, and are available. Uh, we have a chart. Um, what we've been doing is you know we 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 we're starting to see really a shift from the you know in terms of the full time part time faculty ratio in freshman writing. So more full time faculty are teaching the course, and you know. It, I think that is that's another factor here that, that that may help explain this the you know how close you know how we're getting closer to this gap, um, but it's worth noting that this is really going to be a challenge for us because uh, we do you know we we are not our admissions <laughs> criteria are not the same as the admissions criteria at our four year sister institutions and so at other schools students at other CUNY schools students are coming in with a higher academic profile than our students. Um, so if we're expected to sort of, you know, it's, a, it's quite a challenge for us in one semester to, you know, to, you know, for us to even imagine, uh, you know, our, our students being able to move from where they're at when they come in to a point where they're writing at appropriate college level in, um, in one semester. The next thing I want to look at here is not freshman writing, but the next step in the spiral curriculum. I want to look at, um, and this is a real challenge for us, uh, in the spiral curriculum, what we really imagine and, and what, I, what we think you know, really is, is valuable is that when students complete freshman writing, they don't stop writing. Um, they, you know, they continue in their coursework, not writing coursework, but in their coursework, you know, they're learning biology, they're taking a history class, they're taking a philosophy class, they're, they're taking a sociology class. But as they, as they sort of are learning that content and getting exposed to, um, to, you know, to those materials, um, we also want them writing. And so we have the spiral cur writing curriculum says, you know, they ought to, over the next, uh, you know, three or four semesters, they ought to pick up a couple of writing intensive courses, you know, as they're they're making their way towards uh, becoming juniors. Um, in order to do this, we need to make sure we're offering enough writing intensive courses, you know, across the the various kinds of courses that students might take: the humanities, social sciences, natural sciences, etc. Um, and we need to make sure we're advising students into those courses so they're not avoiding them. So they're, they're not unaware of the, this particular graduation requirement because it is a graduation requirement. Um, and, and I have a couple charts here that are going to show, you know, that this, is, this remains, we're making progress on it, but it remains a challenge for us. This uh, chart may be a, a little bit difficult to read on, on first glance because um, it's structured uh, basically uh, by cohort. So we have, for example, the blue bars are the fall of six first-time freshmen. And we're following them, we're sort of charting them in their second term, their third term, their fourth term, their fifth term here, et cetera. Um, so for the fall of six first-time freshmen, the blue bar, uh, what we, when we say second term, we're looking, that's their spring 07 semester. And then third term is their fall 07 semester. And fourth term is their spring 08 semester, et cetera. Um, and then the green bars are uh, represent the fall of seven freshmen. So their second term is spring 08. Their third term is fall 08. Their spring term, um, I mean, their fourth term is spring 09. Um, and then the fall 08 um, first-time freshmen. Um, and this is the, the latest data I have for them. Uh, <clears throat> the fall 08 first-time freshmen in their second term, that was spring 09. Uh, at the conclusion of spring 09. And I want to just, um, I've circled them already, but I, I want to highlight, uh, you know, make note of a couple things here. One, um, timely progress on the lower level WIs uh, really requires that students very quickly, within a semester or two after completing freshman writing or English 125, that they pick up their first WI, and then within another couple semesters, they pick up their second writing intensive course. Um, if we look at this sort of second term uh, completion here, we see the full, you know, 14.3% of the fall of six freshmen uh, completed their W, their first WI within, by the second term, only nine, less than 9% of the fall of seven freshmen did. And then, um, but the fall of eight 
uh, freshmen is dramatically different. Uh, in by their second term, by the end of their second term, almost uh, a third, 29.8 percent of those students had completed their first WI. Um, so something happened between fall 08 and spring 09. I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, but this fall 08, uh, spring 09 thing that, you know, the, the, what happened to, you know, yield that kind of a completion rate for those freshmen, we see that also mapping with regard to the fall 07 first time freshmen between fall 08 and spring 09, uh, that academic year for the fall 07 freshmen, that was their third and fourth terms here, right? So, um, and I've circled there, this, this, this is the green circle. And we see those, uh, that fall 07 cohort between their third and fourth term went from uh, 23% having a WI uh, to 46%. So we, in effect, doubled the number, the percentage of students uh, who came in in fall 07 who had completed their first WI within two years, um, you know, exceeding where the fall 06 freshmen uh, were by that point, by their fourth term. And actually, almost uh, approaching the the percentage that completed it by the by their fifth term. Uh, so what happened here? So we see sort of real growth here. We you know a real turnaround in the second term for that follow seven uh, follow eight freshman cohort, and you know sort of a real jump for the the follow seven freshman cohort in 08, 09. And and a couple things happened. One, we were you know we had data. Um, I had been working with institutional research to. Uh, to you know, to look at this this issue, we knew anecdotally the students were struggling. The students were not completing their WIs on time, um, and so we began to sort of you know dig into that data. And in you know by 2007, by the end of 2007, we we had a pretty clear picture that students were not getting their WIs in a timely fashion. And we did a couple of things. Uh, um, we worked with department chairs and with faculty on campus, uh, you know, presenting this data and, you know, some of this data. And, uh, you know, the faculty were very responsive uh, and said, you know, if we need to offer more WIs, you know, I offer one a semester or one a year. I, you know, I, I, I'm going to offer more. Um, and, you know, we saw chairs willing to do this as well as individual faculty, you know, chairs willing to sort of um, lead their departments in this direction and then individual faculty as well. Uh, taking, you know, stepping up. Um, additionally, we um, we worked with academic advisement and with the counseling office uh, to, you know, to really advise students to take their WIs early. Um, and, you know, what, what I learned was that, you know, that one of the narratives on campus was that students shouldn't take their writing intensive courses early. And I'm not sure where that narrative came from, but the idea was, well, they're harder or they require more work and, and we want students to have success very early on. Um, let them get their writing intensives later. Anyway, this does not map onto the spiral writing curriculum. And so when I worked with, you know, I met with counseling and talked with, uh, with counselors about this, they said, well, we're going we're gonna to start advising students uh, right into writing intensives after freshman writing. And I think we're seeing, you know, the results of that kind of advisement uh, emerging here. And it's really, uh, for me anyways, it's really quite exciting. Um, what this next chart shows is, uh, remember, the spiral writing curriculum says students should complete two writing intensive courses uh, before they get to 60 credits. Uh, and here we have, uh, you know, we, we see the, 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 you know, a real challenge, um, you know, progress, but, but a remaining uh, significant uh, challenge. Um, again, for the fall of seven freshman class, the the third and fourth term, those two semesters, is fall of, fall 08 and spring 09. And for the fall of sixth class, that's their fifth and that, that academic year is their fifth and sixth terms. And so this narrative, this, this, you know, the offer, you know, the fact that we were offering, and, and you'll see this, that we were offering additional writing intensive courses at the lower level, coupled with the advisement into them, uh, sort of raising the profile and, of the, and, you know, and, sort of talking about the importance of getting these writing intensives early uh, has, I, I think, you know, been paying off. When we look at this, the, the fall of seven freshmen uh, in just one academic year, uh, fall, you know, between fall 08 and spring 09, we see a 157% jump in the completion of the second WI uh, for that, that group. And for the fall of six freshmen, we see a 64% jump from 17.9% having two WIs in the, by the end of the fifth term to 29.4% having two WIs by the end of the sixth term. And so, you know, the, the, 
basically offering additional WI, writing intensive courses in the lower level, coupled with advisement, I, I think has, you know, is, is really um, starting to change things here. Um, but the downside, or the flip side of this really, is that, uh, yes, 29.4% of the fall of six entering class has two WIs by the end of their sixth term. But that means by the end of their sixth term, over 70% of those students still don't have the second WI. Now, most of those students probably are above 60 credits. I mean, potentially they could even be uh, seniors at this point um, or going into their senior year following their sixth semester with us. And so they're trying to complete upper level coursework uh, in their fields, you know, finish the, the major requirements. Um, they're likely beyond writing 300, and yet they still need to pick up this lower level writing intensive course. And, and so this is a real challenge. Um, what I want to show you now is the uh, writing intensive course offerings per year, broken down by lower level, upper level. Um, and our, you know, our writing intensive graduation requirement was passed by the Senate uh, in 2001. And so, you know, these data go back to 02, the academic year 2002, 2003. And the, you know, the green bar is the upper level WIs. Um, these are the writing and the disciplines courses in the major. The blue bar is the lower level writing intensive courses. And what we, I, I just want to, you know, I've circled here the 2007 to 2010 set of, uh, of bars here. And what we see is in 07, 08, we really were not offering very many WIs, 59 at the lower level. Um, and again, that the, the data that, that was saying, look, our students aren't getting their lower level w, WIs in time. Uh, you know, we really raised the profile, talked with chairs, talked with individual faculty, and we see a dramatic jump from 59 to 84. Uh, you know, a, that said an increase of 25 writing intensive courses, almost 50% increase, something like 40%. Um, and then in 2009, 2010, offering even more the, uh, last year, uh, this academic year, uh, 90 writing intensive courses at the lower level. Um, for me, though, I, 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 this number is, is, is not really enough. Uh, and so what I really want to encourage is, you know, faculty to look at uh, general education courses, lower level courses they're offering, and uh, think about, hmm, does it make sense to offer that course as a writing intensive? I want to turn now to another set of data on writing at York. Um, and at York, we've, we, we've done surveys for the last decade in writing across the curriculum. On, you know, we've done surveys on and off. We've surveyed faculty. We've surveyed students in classes. Um, and, you know, oftentimes with a survey, uh, people say, well, yeah, so that's what, that's what we're doing. But how are we doing compared to other people, you know, to other schools? Um, the data that we get from CUNY often compare us, right? So here's where York College is on freshman writing pass rates. And here's where the rest of CUNY is. And so we have that sort of comparison has a value to it. Um, you know, I mean, we think it's valuable to sort of measure ourselves against some relevant uh, comparison other. Um, anyway, the data I want to I want to share with you come from the uh, National Survey of Student Engagement, which is a national survey. Uh, it's been given for something like twenty five years. Uh, individual schools decide they want to join the National Survey or participate in the National Survey of Student Engagement. And the Nessie organization then, you know, you send them the, the list of your students and they sample those students and, and contact them and invite them to participate in the survey. When your students participate in the survey, when you join the Nessie and participate, when you agree to participate, uh, the Nessie, the National Survey of Student Engagement, then after this administration, they send you the data. So they send you the data actually and reports um, and they send you your students' uh, data this is broken, this is for freshmen, they, they break it out freshmen and they ask seniors as well. Um, but they also provide you with data on uh, peer institutions, so you select a peer group that, you know, who do you want to be sort of compared with, and then they also give you the data on the, the overall Nessie. So you see, you know, how all the students across, you know, participating in Nessie are responding across the country, how your relevant peers are response, responding, and how you're responding. So it really sort of offers you a kind of a national uh, and a meaningful kind of peer uh, context for, for your student responses. Uh, and the National Service Student Engagement asks a lot of questions about, you know, how much time do you spend studying? 
uh, your, you know, how much time do you work, how much time do you commute, uh, what are you learning in your classes, um, are you engaged in extracurricular activities, a, a whole host of, of questions, really. Um, <clears throat> and it's a well-respected survey. And in, um, I guess it started around 2007, one of my professional organizations, the Council of Writing Program Administrators, uh, began to work uh, in concert with the Nas uh, people from the National Survey of Student Engagement uh, to develop uh, sort of to to develop an additional set of questions uh, about writing, about students' writing practices, to sort of dig a little bit more deeply into, into writing on college campuses. And so they formed a, a partnership um, and created what's called the Consortium for the Study of Writing in College, the CSWC, um, pilots, piloted some questions in 2008 and in 2009, sort of, you know, you know went live or ran with the, 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 um, the CSWC uh, supplemental writing questions. And uh, while they started, you know, perhaps with, you know, more than 100 uh, things they wanted to ask uh, about writing, uh, what they winnowed that, those questions down to uh, 27 questions about students' writing experiences and, and began to make this survey available. So uh, basically with, with a consortium, you, you say, oh, I want to join the Nessie, and then you, you also join a consortium. Uh, and, you know, you see this, for example, the consortium, you know, for example, Catholic universities, you know, have some kind of a, or religious universities will have a consortium. Um, and so this is a consortium for the study of writing in college, uh, schools that are interested in digging a little bit more deeply into the question of, of writing on college campuses. Um, and 73 schools were in the consortium recently. And in 2009, in spring 09, all of CUNY's senior colleges participated in the uh, consortium and, a and uh, asked these 27 questions. Um, so York participated in this, and in addition, um, the Writing Cross Curriculum Program here worked with the Office of Institutional Research and Assessment uh, to get permission from the National Survey of Student Engagement uh, to administer these 27 questions in our writing intensive courses on campus. Um, and the you know sort of and we broke those out by you know the the lower level writing intensives and the upper level writing intensives, and we did that in spring '09. And I want to sort of share with you some of the some of what we found here. Um, and there are you know 27 questions. I'm not going to present all of those to you, but I, I've sort of picked some of them. Um, so what the first thing I want to sort of share with you is uh, best practices in writing process. And you know there are a set of there's a set of questions in the the consor you know these 27 supplemental questions that get at writing process, uh, best practices in writing process. So for example, pre-writing. You know, are you brain? You know, do you brainstorm or share ideas before you start writing? Uh, drafting, revision, proofreading. You know, they have you know, a set of questions that ask about that. You know, do you do you prepare a draft? Do you revise? Do you proofread your? You know, how often do you proofread your work? Um, they ask. You know, do you get feedback from your instructor? Or do you seek feedback from your instructor? Do you uh, seek support, or do you go to a writing center or a, a learning center um, to get uh, assistance on your writing? So these are some of the best practices in, in writing process. Um, and, and here's where we're at uh, in comparison to the consortium uh, as a whole, the 70-something schools. Um, and here are the questions. During the, during, during the current school year, for how many of your writing assignments have you done each of the following? Brainstorm to develop ideas, talked with your instructor about ideas before a draft, received feedback from your instructor about a draft, visited a writing center, proofread your draft for errors, and what we're presenting here really is the, the freshman, uh, freshman responses. Um, and in the first column, we have the York uh, College, and, um, and then in the next column, we have the consortium as a whole. Um, and these are mean scores, you know, the average response. And they, those scores run, the range is basically from a 1 to a 5. And students marking a 1 would say, you know, for no assignments. I, I didn't do this for any of my assignments. And then a 5, the student said, you know, I did this for all of my assignments. Um, when we see asterisks here uh, in the means, uh, what that's telling us is that the, the difference between the, the York mean and the consortium mean is statistically significant. And so it is a real difference, in, a, a real mean score difference. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, I, I think that's, you know, it's really worth, worth noting here that, and this is, you know, partly why I've, I've selected this, um, when we look on each one of these, with the exception of proofreading, on each one, York College uh, the York College student response 
uh, freshman response exceeds the consortium, the, the overall consortium response. So our students are doing this, uh, are engaged in these activities at rates that exceed the, the national average, um, with the exception of proofreading, um, where we are in line with the national average. Um, again, these are freshmen, and I think this is probably a, uh, you know, at least in part an artifact. Uh, this is a sort of a, really a, a question about freshman writing. You know, are you doing these things in freshman writing? Uh, it's not exclusively that, but I, but I think that really um, that's really what students are mostly thinking about when they respond to this. So this is this is this is good, really good news about uh, our students' writing practices uh, in you know in fre as freshmen. Um, let's dig a little bit deeper here, and let's take a look at these same questions uh, and compare our freshmen. Um, you know, really primarily thinking about freshman writing. Uh, with student responses from the lower writing intensive courses, you know, the, so, the 100 level or 200 level sociology course or the 1 or 200 level history course or the, you know, the 1 or 200 level cultural diversity course. Um, and then the upper level writing intensive course, you know, the senior capstone course for English majors or the, you know, the capstone bio course, uh, lab course, etc. Um, and when we look here, um, we don't see a lot of asterisks. Um, and that surprised me. Actually, uh, I when I look at the when I think about the freshmen and I'm thinking that they're really uh, in freshman writing or they just got out of freshman writing and they're they're basically reporting on on um, writing process practices from freshman composition. Um, I expect that students are engaged in brainstorming, you know, talking with their instructor about a draft, getting feedback about a draft, going to the writing center, proofreading. I expect that they're doing that, but I really. And, and I, you know, I also expect that they're doing that in their in their writing intensives. But I expected to see some real slippage between the freshmen and the lower WI and the upper WI, and that's because in those in those writing intensive courses, you know, the the emphasis primarily is on the content, right? The students are are engaged in learning sociology or learning uh, history, um, and the writing certainly uh, supports that content. You know, is a way for students to sort of you know understand the content. But the focus in a writing intensive course is not on writing development the way it is in a writing class. And so the fact that we don't see mean score differences, over, you know, mostly don't see mean score differences here between the freshman and the WI responses tells me that, you know, the students are carrying forward the writing process practices that they, that they started in their freshman year. They're carrying that into both the, w, the lower WIs and the upper WIs. Um, and of course, you know, this doesn't happen without the faculty in those writing intensive courses supporting that, that kind of work. Um, I do want to note that the two mean score differences that, that are different here, um, statistically significant. Um, if we look at rece received feedback from an instructor about a draft, um, there's an asterisk there for the lower WI. And what that asterisk is, asterisk is telling us is that in the upper level WIs, the student respondents are saying, you know, they're not getting feedback from instructor about a draft as often or as regularly. Um, you know, that may make, uh, you know, that may make sense. The, you know, these are presumably stronger writers. They're further along in their education. Um, maybe they're expected to work a little bit more independently there uh, than, than in the lower level where they're really just starting out. Um, and the other one that, that is worth noting is the proofreading, the, the final row there in the, in the table. Um, our upper level WI students are reporting that they're engaged in proofreading at rates that are higher than the students in the lower WI. And again, I think, you know, I don't know, but, you know, there's a, there's a you know, we could tell a story here that, that, that seems quite plausible. You know, at the upper level WI, the students have selected a major, they're in the major, they're close to completion of the major, they really care about the work they're doing, and they, and they want to, they take that last step by proofreading their draft for errors. Uh, they take that, you know, more seriously than perhaps the student in the lower writing intensive course who's taking a general education course that, uh, you know, is not really connected with the major, and maybe they're not as concerned with uh, proofreading. I want to look at another set of questions from uh, these 27 supplemental questions, um, and I want to look at uh, pedagogy, best practices in writing and in writing across the curriculum, pedagogy. Um, and I just want to pick on five, pick out five of these. Um, one, you know, providing clear written instructions for students, uh, you know, on assignments, Ex uh, explaining the assignment goals and objectives um, in advance. 
uh, providing some evaluative criteria. And it may be sort of formal rubrics or something, you know, not quite a rubric, but, you know, some evaluative criteria. You know, how are we going to evaluate this, your, your written product? Um, another best practice is including low stakes writing or informal writing. And peer review is, a, is another um, best practice. So where are we? Where are York students in relation to sort of, you know, or actually, you know, these questions aren't really, these are they're student responses, but when the students sort of, the, the questions themselves really get at instructional practices. So where are our instructional practices here um, in comparison, at York, in comparison to uh, national practice? Um, and again, this is York alongside of the consortium uh, as a whole. And again, these are freshman responses. So the question is, during the current school year, for how many of your writing assignments has your instructor done each of the following? Provided clear instructions. Explained the learning goals in advance. Explained in advance the grading criteria. Asked you to do short, ungraded writing. Asked you to give feedback on a classmate's draft. Um, and like uh, the earlier, the other set of questions about student uh, writing and revision process, uh, practices, um, what we see here when we, when we look at York, the York column in comparison to the consortium column, uh, York students are basically report that their that their instructors uh, do these you know engage are engaged in these best practices at rates that exceed the national average. Um, so four point two four as opposed to three point nine three, and that is significant at the you know sort of ninety nine percent less than point oh one. Uh, and, you know, the explaining the learning goals in advance, uh, uh, apparently we are, you know, we are way above the, uh, the, the national average on that, um, and et cetera. The only one that's not significantly different is ask you to give feedback on a classmate's draft. So sort of the peer review question, if you will. Um, there's a difference, 3.16 versus 3.03, the last row in the, in the table, um, but it's not statistically significant, that difference. So basically, you know, we're doing peer review here at about, you know, in line with the national average. Um, you know, this is really, uh, as students are reporting, the, you know, these are best practices and students are reporting we're doing a better job, you know, we're doing more of this here than, uh, than the nation as a whole or the, you know, the schools in the consortium as a whole are, are engaged in this. So let's, uh, let's compare our, um, our freshmen at York with uh, the freshman response with the writing intensive response, uh, writing intensive course response on these on these questions. And again, it's the same questions. Uh, the first column of data here presents mean scores for the freshman respondents. Um, and again, I, I like to think of this as something of a proxy for freshman composition uh, because these are freshmen, they're taking freshman composition um, or they've just completed it when they're asked this question you know, during the current school year. Uh, the second column is uh, students in the lower lower uh, level writing intensive courses, the 100, 200 level, and then the third column is the upper level writing intensive courses. Um, you know, and for me, I mean, I'm the, the writing across the curriculum coordinator, so, uh, you know, and I know the faculty teaching writing intensive courses are, are, are doing a great job with that, and we have, you know, we have a review process for writing intensive courses before faculty uh, are approved to teach the course. Um, you know, we have a, you know, and we've done some, uh, some assessment of, you know, of, of what kinds of practices uh, faculty have adopted in, in their writing intensive courses. And so, you know, I mean, I know good stuff is happening in those courses, but I really, again, expected some slippage here that in a, in a writing course and freshman, you know, the freshman responses, I thought, you know, in terms of instructional practices, I thought that the faculty in the freshman writing courses uh, would be, uh, engaged in these practices at rates that, you know, exceed at least a little bit uh, what we would find in the writing intensives. Um, and maybe this is simply a sign that, you know, this is about as much as you can uh, ask, you know, that, 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 that we're engaged in these best practices is about as high a rate as you can possibly expect. Um, because we're not seeing any differences in the mean scores. So you know, just take provided clear instructions, you know, a mean of 4.21 versus a mean of 4.19 versus a mean of 4.09. Um, you know, these differences in the mean scores are not statistically significant. So, you know, basically that's about the same. And this is true, you know, throughout the table with, with two exceptions. Um, and again, it's a kind of interesting exceptions. 
um, asked you to do short ungraded writing. What we see is that in the lower level WIs, faculty are doing are asking students to do this uh, ungraded writing, informal writing, low stakes writing, at rates that are higher than uh, than faculty, you know, than than in the upper level WIs. And so, in the upper level WIs, faculty aren't asking students to do this ungraded writing, the informal writing, as much as they are in the lower WIs. And we might explain this. I mean, I think that it might make sense that, in, you know, in this upper-level coursework, uh, the informal writing uh, maybe is not as relevant or the faculty don't see it as relevant. The students are more advanced and they're working, you know, they have a different kind of, they have a, a writing in the disciplines project and, and maybe the emphasis is a little more on formal writing. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, th I think that, you know, I would like to see the upper-level WIs uh, you know, sort of the students reporting that, you know, they're also engaged in, in more ungraded, uh, you know, informal writing. Um, but I think we can, ex we can understand this when we think about the goals, you know, the emphases in, the, in these two courses, the difference between the lower and the upper. Um, and then the final uh, row, asking you to give feedback on a classmate's draft. Um, here again, it, it seems that in the upper level WIs, faculty are not asking students to, to do that as much as they are uh, in the lower WIs. Or in the or in you know asking or in the freshman comp in the freshman responses, um, and and you know it may simply be that by the junior or senior year with practice you know with consistent ongoing practice with this you know that by embedding peer review uh, regularly into courses into the the, the spiral writing curriculum. Um, by the upper level WI faculty are kind of saying, well, you know, students, you should, you know, find a find a peer in class and and share your work with with him or her, uh, rather than sort of moving that into the class, um, keeping it, you know, basically expecting students to work more independently on this and seek the support they need uh, from their peers. Um, but good stuff, really, I think. So, what can we? What do I hope that you that you'll take from from um, you know, this select set of data um, that is certainly not the entire picture on writing at your college. First thing I think, um, and th this is really exciting for me, is that, you know, we really do have a culture of writing and the writing process here on campus. Um, and we see this in the Nessie data for freshmen, and we see this also in the locally administered Nessie data for writing intensive courses. Um, you know, I mean, we have a lot of things that, 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 uh, you know, a lot of signs that we have a, a culture of writing. We have, uh, you know, a number of student uh, publications on campus. Um, but, you know, what we're seeing in these, in these student responses really is that, um, you know, students have, by and large, um, embraced and adopted uh, the kinds of uh, writing process practices that, you know, that we think are best practices that we, when I say we, I mean composition faculty, uh, composition scholars, uh, see as best practices. Um, and, you know, the, the other, the, you know, the, the pedagogy uh, questions from the Nessie uh, supplemental questions really uh, tell us that the faculty have also embraced that, that, you know, in the kinds of uh, assignment practices that, um, that they've adopted throughout, not just in freshman writing, but throughout the writing intensives as well. And the second thing that I, that uh, conclusion that I, I just wanted to emphasize here is that English 125 or first year composition uh, completion rates are up. Uh, some of this has to do with the fact that we have stronger freshmen, general by and large, uh, but it also has to do with our use of uh, best practices in, in writing pedagogy and work that we've been doing in the English department um, to establish greater consistency across our freshman writing course. And I think this is also good news. Um, you know, I mean, we still have work to do, but I, I but I think it's generally good news for us. Um, and then I want to leave you with um, with a real challenge for us. The timely completion uh, of lower level WIs is a challenge. Um, what we see is that we've made since uh, two thousand eight, we've made major progress at all levels. Um, you know, our 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 entering freshmen in fall oh eight are moving more quickly towards completion of those lower WIs. Uh, but only 29% of the fall 06 freshman class um, had two WIs by spring 09, by the end of their third year here. And this, I think, is really uh, problematic. Um, the solution, uh, or part of the solution here, is, uh, you know, continuing uh, the advisement uh, of students into writing intensive courses early. But um, the other component of this is we need more writing intensive courses on campus. 
Uh, you know, we're offering 90 sections of writing intensive courses at the lower level this year, um, and that is not enough yet. Um, it's a lot, um, but when we when you have a three writing intensive course graduation requirement and a growing uh, student body, you know, you really need we we really need to make sure we're offering enough courses for students to be able to find them at times that fit their schedules. Um, and, you know, I see this anecdotally outside my door, students coming by, talking to me, trying to find writing intensive courses at the lower level. I see this as, as uh, students approach graduation, begin to panic that they're trying to find these lower ten writing intensive courses. Um, and certainly faculty have responded on this in a big way. Um, and so when I say that we need more, it's not to say that the faculty aren't, aren't working hard enough, but to say that um, I would really like uh, to involve, you know, I think we really need to involve more, you know, more faculty and more courses. And so I would encourage you to uh, consider offering, you know, where appropriate, um, if you're teaching in the gen ed core, to offer a writing intensives. Um, so on that note, I, I'd just like to sort of, you know, open up uh, for discussion uh, questions that you might have. Um, you know, maybe we could explore some of the um, issues around writing that, that, I'm, that I'm not dealing with in, in this particular talk. So thank you very much.